Uh, hey guys, this is uh, Alex. I'm gonna chat with you a little bit about the new Convolution Bloom that shipped in Unreal 4.16. Um, for you guys that aren't super familiar, um, I'm not gonna go crazy in detail uh, about how it works, um, but the very, very short answer is that you can use a texture to control your bloom uh, kernel and shape. Uh, there's a really, really great Twitch stream that was put up by Epic that covers a lot of the technology behind it and the math behind it. If you're really interested, I would recommend going there. Um, what I'm going to be doing, I'm probably not even going to go over many of the settings. I'm mostly going to be going over how to make the actual texture because that seems to be the, the part that is the most complicated. Um, so in terms of turning it on, uh, in your post process volume under Bloom uh, for lens effects, there is a button for method or a drop down, and you can switch that to convolution. And by default, it's actually going to use a convolution texture that Epic included in the uh, uh, in the in the version of Unreal. Um, and I've I've kind of exaggerated that effect, but you can see it's super pretty and nice, and that's super cool. But we'd like to be able to make our own, and that's where things get a little tricky. Um, one of the things that I'm willing to bet uh, a lot of people have done is they've tried to grab one of their own textures. Um, I've got this random 8-bit uh, texture from my lens flare pack that I've grabbed. And if I go ahead and put that in here, um, wow, cool, look at that, starbursts. Um, but it's affecting the entire image. And that's where this starts to get a little complicated is uh, what's happening is not just simply taking the image and splattering it around the map, or, or uh, taking your convolution texture kernel, or kernel texture, I should say, and just copying it over, um, like some of the uh, the more optimized depth of field techniques and stuff that are out there. What it's actually doing is it's taking the image and it's moving it into a special uh, mathematics space, and it's doing the same for the, the render image, and then it's applying math to it. And as a result, the maximum contrast within this convolution kernel texture uh, matters quite a bit um, because it's going to get applied to the entire image and that's what makes uh, this technique too expensive for runtime games at the moment is uh, you are doing this complex set of math to every single pixel you're not just taking the bright points and calculating um, you know a blur and then adding it back on which is the the standard technique so what we're going to do is we're going to look at the texture that epics included and some of the interesting parts about that and then we're also going to look at uh, making uh, your own texture in Photoshop and some of the problems that may pop up. And I'm going to try and include any of the relevant links um, for things that I've talked about in the description of the video. I'll link that Twitch stream um, and a couple other things that, that'll pop up. So uh, getting started, the, the convolution texture that's included, I think it's just called the... Uh, let me just search kernel, but you have to spell kernel, right? Uh, there's default bloom kernel. Um, you can actually find that in your content browser if you have engine content visible. We can we can open that up really quickly, turn off the alpha channel, and it looks like this. Um, but you see this little slider down here is the exposure bias. By playing around with that, you can actually see that it's, it's actually a, a relatively complex texture. Um, I think my understanding from the stream is that maybe they took a, a photo of an actual flare, but uh, uh, either way, um, we want to author something kind of like this. Uh, and that means we have to author it in 32-bit uh, so that we have uh, a, much, a much brighter range of uh, values available to us. Um, so it's, it's actually possible to export this texture like it is any asset from Unreal. Uh, it exports it out as a .hdr image, so you can't re-import it super easily because then Unreal thinks it's a cube map. But uh, I've kicked it out to my desktop, so let's go over and, and take a look. Um, at, at what that looks like. Uh, let's see. HDR. There it is. So the default bloom kernel. Um, so you'll notice up here that it says RGB 32. And if you're working in a new image, you just want image mode 32 bit RGB color. Um, that's super important. Uh, it, it means we're working with uh, exposure and a very, very big range of values. And if you open up your color picker and you're sliding around, you're gonna notice, if you're not familiar with this, and forewarning, I'm not that familiar with this. I may be really doing some painful uh, things in terms of image editing 
I, I don't recommend what I'm doing as, as best practice. This is just how to get something in the engine. Um, if you're super familiar with HDR image editing, drop me a line. I'd love to, to learn more about it. Um, but you have, uh, you know, a color that can exist in different exposure levels. Uh, and this intensity is actually giving us a clue as to really how dark or how bright something is. And you'll notice that uh, if you look way out here, the, the texture actually drops down to like, you know, very, very, very low into like the negative 13 uh, stops, something like that. But if we zoom in really close, it actually climbs through a nice gradient um, uh, up to a brighter point. And then in the very center, it's hard to see, but it actually does climb all the way up to uh, positive 16. Um, and this is where uh, uh, this is where it gets important to, to take note of those values because the lowest value of your image and the, the brightest value of your image are, are essentially putting in these these ranges for the convolution kernel and then when you slide in your actual you know texture this this cool image or lens flare effect uh, the brightness of that relative to those other brightness points is going to control whether or not it appears and that's why um, you know that that lens flare texture that I put in before that was a problem because well the bright point is one uh, at the very center, but the bright point of everything kind of comes to one, so it was applying this effect all over the place. Um, the, the easiest way to start things off is to go in with a... Uh, oop. Okay, all right, I've got the color picker open. Uh, so I've, I've made my a new image right now, and I'll, I've, I've made some, some things that you can and can't see, uh, but I set my base layer as negative uh, 20. And this is just, just to get things started. Um, and then I'm putting in a single really bright pixel uh, or set of pixels right at the center. And these are at a value of positive 20. So now the range is huge. And that's, that's great um, because uh, that lets me kind of uh, work within a really broad space of, of the type of textures that I want to throw in. So I'm going to go in and, and actually I'm just going to save this image out. So uh, we want to be saving as EXR images, the big uncompressed 32-bit formats. I recommend the plugin Pro EXR. I'll throw a link in the description. It used to be paid. Uh, if you Google it, uh, it may come up as this will soon be free. But I think if you go to the actual site, it is now free. Um, we're just going to go with the easy export setup. Uh, I'm going to save it as my first FFT. Um, no compression, no alpha channel, save that out. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, I've actually got, got it in, so I'm going to re-import it, um, find that in my content browser, and plug it in. Um, and, and you're not going to see anything um, except, for, uh, except for these white spots. Um, but you're going to notice the whole image isn't blurring, which is great. Um, that's, that's what we want. Um, the, I'm not going to mess with the convolution scale or the center, because I know I'm working in the very center. I shouldn't even be changing the buffer, but I'll, I'll talk about why I've been sliding that around recently. Um, the, the, the two numbers here are, are kind of a, a, a min and max for the third number, which is a boost. I, I, may, or, I may or may not be butchering that description a little. I do recommend uh, watching the video, because they do go over these things a little bit more in detail. But right now, we're not doing anything. Um, we're not uh, pulling in a lot of other pixels to the bloom. We're just getting a couple of white uh, hot points where the light is hitting along those lines. So um, let's go back over to the texture. And um, this is where it gets a little tricky to add elements because you're adding elements usually, or at least you know, a decent chunk of us are going to be used to authoring in, in non-HDR formats. And when you pull in uh, regular, you know, 8-bit images into these formats, some problems can get created. Um, and I'll show you an example of what that would be. So let's say you just want a nice soft bloom. Um, uh, I'm going to kind of make a normal gradient, something like this, right? Invert that. So great, I've got this. I'm going to go into my my FFT texture and I'm going to paste that in. It's going to give me a little warning about switching color spaces. Um, and now I've got, uh, I'm going to group these unused images. There we go. So now I've got this, uh, 
uh, this image in here. Unfortunately, if I go into my, I've got an exposure thing on here, and I start to crank that up, um, and I start looking at the, the color values uh, around, you're going to see, uh, well, what you're going to see is that it goes to zero because I've accidentally had it take up the entire image. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shrink this down so closer to what you'd expect so that there's a border. And if I now um, if I crank this exposure, uh, you're going to see that the, the values uh, on the black parts of the pixel of your previous image aren't going to necessarily match up. It looks like I accidentally had color in my in my base layer. Um, uh, but yeah, so if I go into my color picker, you can actually see this. Um, this goes from, uh, you know, a brightness of zero down to negative, looks like negative 10, and then back to zero, and then it pops to 19, and it does all this weird stuff. Um, so what I'm going to do instead of that is I'm actually going to generate a mask. I'm going to close their image. But I'm going to generate a mask off this image. So I'm just going to create a mask based on the brightness. Um, and then I'm just going to flood this layer white. You know, just so I can visualize it. I'll flood the underlying layer black. So it looks the same, but now we have a nice mask based on the same thing. Um, so I'm going to grab... Uh, I'm actually going to grab that layer. I'm going to make this smaller. Um, we'll call this you know, soft gradient. Uh, and I'm going to move over here. Uh, it's going to say, yes, there's a different uh, depth target. There's going to be a drop in quality. Yes, it's a different space. Um, but now I can go in. Um, yeah, we'll keep this around for now. But now I can go in and actually I'm gonna put this image right where I want it in the center. Um, and I'm going to shrink it down. Uh, and I can flood this base value whatever I want. So I'm actually going to flood it uh, something around here. Um, and it is visually going to do some weird stuff. Um, uh, it won't look necessarily the, uh, the way you'd expect. You can see here, I still have that nice gradient down. Um, but it's... Uh, it doesn't doesn't visually look it to me, and if I were to go in and start, um, you know, messing with my exposure, um, you'd see I actually am getting, uh, I actually am still getting that that fall off that I want, um, but that that layer is just there for preview. Uh, so yeah, so let's let's really quickly export this out. I'm gonna go back down EXR my first FFT, and I'm gonna get, I'm gonna show you guys a bug that I have noticed. Um, so. I'm going to re-import my texture. Uh, and I know it's re-imported because I can see a white dot there, but nothing has changed. And this is the bug. is Sometimes when you re-import uh, an FFT texture that is in use, you have to slide and play around a little bit with uh, the convolution buffer to get it to update that, uh, that set of values. But now you can see I'm starting to kind of get uh, that, that ball gradient that's appearing... Um, where where those bright spots are um which is great that's that's pretty much a start um and and really it's it's about you know whatever content authoring technique you want to go through um to start getting these textures to then appear uh is is then up to you like i know um i want uh, a very bright uh spot of bloom uh, right in the uh, right in the very very center, because I want to cover up that single pixel brightness. Right, I don't feel there's a natural fall off to the very center, um, as opposed to the default bloom kernel, which has this cool little you know ab color abjured star or whatever, color abjurated. Uh, so I'm gonna do that in. I'm gonna throw in a soft flare, and you're gonna see obviously blending is uh, uh is definitely a uh an issue um so i'm gonna i'm gonna mask this out uh, but this soft this soft layer is just to add that in and then i've got my own little flare texture that i've added in on top of that um 
and then maybe I'll add this soft gradient. Um, I'll apply this mask and maybe maybe spread it out nice and big, um, but I'm going to make it very uh, very low opacity. Um, I'm just going to make it even lower opacity. Uh, yeah, so let's take a look at that. And in fact, really quickly, I'm going to turn everything off, but um, that really bright bloom element. And keep in mind, I still have my layer with a bright point and a layer with a base layer um, with those really bright and dark values. Those are permanently locked in my image file. So I'm going to go ahead and save this out as an EXR file. Do this, overwrite it, keep all my settings. Um, find the texture, re-import it, and again, you can see it didn't update, but if I, if I mess with this around, hey, look, it's starting to update. Um, I'm going to drop this, this lower range so that I'm boosting more of the image, uh, and if I were to really pull that intensity up, you can see I am, in fact, uh, grabbing um grabbing some of that uh some of that effect which is kind of cool um but that's just a start uh i, I kind of want to take it uh a, a good deal farther um that you can really drop that threshold really low and i'm still seeing i'm still seeing indi individual pixels that are really really bright um so I'm going to go in here and I'm going to actually uh, make this uh, I'm actually going to make this even brighter. Uh, so I think right now it's at, you know, roughly two steps. Uh, I'm going to see how much an HSV shift doesn't really move it that much. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, I think I'll do it with the exposure. And I'll just make the exposure of that brighter. And now looking at it, um, it's closer to, closer to 5 at the center. And then I'm actually going to take my, my bright point, um, which are these four little pixels here, which I, I literally just made by... Uh, flooding, um, flooding four like that, um, uh, and instead of having them at twenty, I'm gonna drop them down to thirteen, um, which is gonna change how the rest of the image gets composited together. But uh, yeah, so I'm gonna save all that out again on my exposure. If I drop that down still see I still have a gradient that exists in that in that image which is kind of nice but I'll turn that off for now and save this out um, easy R my first all right over here so what I'm hoping to see is I'm hoping to get less of these random uh, dots with nothing happening on them um, slide this around and there we go. That is the result that I would expect. So this is cool. I'm getting I'm getting what I want. I'm gonna go ahead and turn in turn turn in uh, turn on that uh, these different layers. Uh, maybe maybe this long flare. Um, where is it? It's this one. Long soft element. Uh, I'm gonna. Kind of flatten that out a little, like that. So save all this out. Uh, at this point, you guys have the drill uh, down. So re-import it. Slide that around. Boom. Now we're starting to get a cool, a cool thing. It looks like there is some, uh, some minor artifacts going on. I may have some accidentally put in some messed up values um, but yeah now we're getting 
getting exactly the kind of you know crazy abrams uh you know um uh kind of bloom that uh would be kind of fun to have the artistic control over or you guys could you know use a uh, something along the lines of what i made for my lens flare pack which is just a sprite um that's drawn in the hud um yeah so let's drop that down but yeah so that is uh that is a a very short kind of uh look at at making one of your own textures that that does this kind of thing um feel free to throw any any questions in the comments i'll i'll hit them up and i'll do my best to answer i'm uh i'm around a, a bit and i should be able to help clear out anything that is uh questionable anyway thanks for thanks for watching and um yeah have a good one uh, oh i'll also post up a link to my actual uh texture that i made uh as well as all the the plugins and stuff like that so hopefully that helps as well great